Welcome back YouTube. I'm Steve. I'm the Idaho Fabricator. Today we're going to take this rusty crusty brake drum that weighs a ton and we're going to turn it into a really cool stand for my portable bandsaw. So I'm going to sandblast this and I'll meet you in the shop. Sandblasted. It only took me a half an hour and uh, looks way better than it did out behind the shop. Um, so this is a gosh at least 80 pounds of cast iron so um, this will make a really good base for my uh, my bandsaw and uh, I don't know if you remember a few videos ago but this is the uh, table that I bought for my bandsaw. It's uh, from Swag Off-Road and Man, it, you know, it's all laser cut and it fits the saw perfectly. Um, I really like it. In fact, I, uh, I'm i surprised I didn't buy this thing sooner. It's really increased my productivity, uh, making small parts and cutting things um, that I had to do freehand before. So it's a really nice um, bandsaw and a really nice table. Um, it's got these miter gauge slots built into it so you can you know, put a miter gauge on and if you want to you know, get square cuts on things, it's really nice. The slots on both sides, which is cool. And uh, the only thing that I don't like about my saw is it doesn't have a lock on the on the on off switch. So the way you use it is you have to, you have to take a clamp and clamp the, clamp the switch on. I guess you could use a zip tie if you wanted to and then plug the saw in. So what I'm going to do today is um, I'm going to wire it up to an on-off on -off switch, okay, and put it underneath the, underneath the base. And so I picked up a male and a female plug, a couple of covers for it, some 14.3 uh, SOJ wire. This is the same kind of wire that, uh, I think it is, yeah, SJO, same stuff that your power tools have and some safety red spray paint. I know, it's all about OSHA. And uh, coincidentally, it's almost the same color as my bandsaw, so it's gonna look really cool. So you need this stuff here. And then uh, what I did also is I got a couple pieces of steel. One piece of steel I uh, cut in a round circle what i did is i just measured the the drum here okay and then uh it's about 13 13 inches i think something like that and then went to my portable bandsaw and um surprisingly you know you can cut with that um you know nice gentle arcs so cut that out smoothed it up over on my belt sander so it looks kind of nice and then uh when I marked the holes, what I did was I put the plate down and then I turned the drum upside down, set it on the plate of steel, and then kind of just centered it, you know, around, just kind of knock it with a little punch until it was centered, right? And then I took this, I don't even know where I got this thing, it's just a spacer from something, but it fits these holes pretty close, doesn't have to be exact. And then I can get an alignment punch inside it. So then I just went around and marked all of these holes. There's 10 of them. And then went over to the drill press and drilled, drilled them out with a 5 8 drill bit. And uh, so that was pretty easy. And that's how I did that. And then the way this is thing is going to go together, let me show you here. So I've got this. You totally have to get one of these. Um, I got a stand. Because this thing is heavy. All right, so got a piece of pipe here. And uh, it was just some pipe that I already had. So the way this is going to go together, this is going to get bolted down to the brake drum. This pipe is going to get... Uh, welded onto 
this plate, okay? And then I've got uh, another piece of steel here. It's gonna go on top. So far, it's all real basic stuff. The uh, bandsaw is gonna bolt to that. And then uh, I got a, this is just a piece of, um, just some square tubing. And I just cut the back side off, okay? I'm gonna weld this onto the front like that, up close, and then bolt this uh, bracket on there. And then I'll have the on off switch right in front. So it's gonna work out pretty good. I, I decided to do it this way rather than just welding it on there. I just think it looked cooler. So as long as we're building a tool stand, it might as well be a really cool one, right? So that's the, the gist of what we're gonna do today. And oh, I removed some bolts. I picked up 10 of these 5 8 bolts and some nuts and washers. And uh, I think I'm going to leave these black, you know, the, the black oxide color. It'll be a nice contrast with, uh, with the red paint. And, and um, so, yeah, I think it'll look cool. So. That's what we're going to get started with, and uh, I'm going to put on my welding gear, and we're going to start and do it, start putting this thing together. So stay tuned. All right, got my gear on, and uh, while I was while I was getting my gear on, I went ahead and uh, just kind of ran a wire wheel around the edge where I'm going to be welding. Um, just want to make sure I get a nice clean joint, and then. Uh, I want to center this, so I'm going to take my adjustable square and just kind of go back and forth a couple of times. Okay, so that means it's got to come this way a little bit. And just, just kind of go back and forth. Wow, that's pretty doggone close. Let's see. That's like Wow, I'm impressed. Usually it takes like a long time, so. All right, so we got this where we want it. Let's go ahead and tack this on all four sides. And then uh, weld this. sides up right so best I can I'm going to just slide this out a little bit clamp it to my bench and hopefully minimize that uh, warping so keep our fingers crossed These clamps just fight you the whole way. All right, here we go. Let's get this done.
and all the way around. Clamps off of there. See how we did. That looks pretty good, huh? I don't think that's going to come off. <laughs> all right, so we got that bad boy on there. And uh, now, we do this guy here. Okay. Whew. Looks like a smokestack. <laughs> All right, same, same drill as before. Get the sliding square and measure. Self. Don't hit your head on that. Okay, so man, this is really close. So slide that over. Slide that over. Okay, it's centered there. Now let's try this one here. These adjustable squares really handy. If you don't have one, get one. We use it a lot. All right, so same procedure. I'll tack these. And uh, I did want to mention something. This this part here that I'm going to add on. The reason I'm doing this last. And you kind of have to think like this when you're doing stuff. Is uh, can you get to all the welds? So I'm going to do this weld first, and then I can easily get to this weld. Plus, I want to have it um, square with the front. So that's why I'm not doing this. I'm doing this last. So. All right, let's tack this guy down. This. See, I'll just leave that one alone and I'll just come over here and it magically falls. It's, I don't know, it's weird. Okay, so there's that, and then we are going to put this guy on here. And uh, what I have to do is um, I want to make sure that it's okay this way and I also want to make sure that I leave enough room because this box is going to sit on here and then uh, let me show the cover. going to overhang that box a little bit so I want to make sure that um, you know I leave enough room so it doesn't hit the hit the lid so probably somewhere in there I'm guessing and then I'll put the switch right in front of the tool where I want it it'll be uh, 
it'll be cool. So, all right, so that's what we're going to do there. You know, I'm going to clean some of this uh, splatter off of here real quick while I can get to it. So, let me get my sander and clean that up real quick. Some air power. Come on, quick. All right, so let's clean a little bit of this. Uh... All right, so once I got this out, I'm going to. Uh... Clean a little bit of the, uh, you know, where we're going to weld this on, so it's going to be somewhere in here probably, so. Nice and clean, so we'll get a good weld. Thank you, YouTube. This is going to sit right there. Cover on the front. And uh, I just got to do a wire hanger. So I am going to uh, take some of this gear off because it is smoking hot out here today. I think we're going to be maybe 85 outside. So I'm going to take some of this clothing off and figure out what we're going to do and I'll be right back. All right, welcome back. I had to do a little, I had to put my, get my creative juices flowing. And uh, so here's what I came up with. I got my, uh, my, my um, miter gauge. So I made this piece here, pretty simple. The idea is it's just going to rest on that. Okay, and then this part, this curved part will be welded to the pipe. And then uh, this little piece of pipe is just to kind of hold it in place while I'm measuring and everything. That's about the height I want. And then up here, I took a magnet and I drilled and tapped the pipe. And the idea is that when this is up here, the magnet will hold it on there. It won't fall off. Um, you know, the pipe, this doesn't allow it to go all the way in, but it goes in and it sticks to that. So I think that'll work good for that. So that's going to go there like that. And then on the other side over here, I did the, uh, I wanted to have a place for the, for the cord. Okay. Now a lot of times this is what I'm going to use. Just a piece of three eighths rod with a little bend in it. And what I do is I just go ahead and I drill a hole in the, pipe. It kind of holds it where I want it to do, where I want it to be, and then I can go ahead and weld it. It works. It's just way easier than trying to hold this here, and it's just way easier to drill a little hole, make sure that that's where you want it, and then give it a little tap. It's ready for welding. So I'm going to weld these up, and uh, we'll be ready for some paint. All right? 
I got those two pieces welded on there and I wanted to show you that uh, magnet deal that I was talking about. So this just slides up, magnet holds it on there, works pretty good. This will be where the uh, cords are going to hang. And uh, now it's time for some red paint. So I'm going to herniate this out here. My painting carousel. And this monster. Good thing I go to the gym. Yeah, put this under so it doesn't stick to the mat. All right. I'm going to paint these with some safety red paint. And uh, when they're dry, I'm going to show you how to wire this up and hook it all up and take it for a test drive. Well, it, it didn't take overnight to dry. It took two nights to dry. And uh, I wanted to share with you, I bought this uh, industrial paint. I got it where I get uh, all my bolts and nuts and whatnot. And any anytime you see industrial strength, high solids, single coat hiding power, gasoline and chemical resistance, that's basically double speak for, it's gonna take a long time to dry. <laughs> In this case, two days. But it turned out nice, nice safety red. And uh, so the first thing that I want to do is bolt that to that. So I got a rug here somewhere. There we go. No sense scratching up that nice paint job. That's a tight fit. All right, so I'll get, to get one bolt started. And I think I should be able to get the other bolts to. Uh, Hold it up and then tighten them all at once. Alright, now. Now comes the fun part. Feels good. Well, there you got it, guys. There's the uh, pretty good, huh? Oh yeah, it's not going anywhere. Okay, I'm gonna get the uh, my wiring and stuff set up, and then uh, I'll be right back. All right, well let's uh, let's bolt this uh, portable bandsaw on here. Get it wired up. See how it looks. So get on these guys. Nice thing about making your own stand is you can, um, you know, figure the. Whoo, man, those are everywhere. You can get the height exactly where you want it, so it's comfortable for you. So if you're doing using this for a vice or whatever, depending on where you're comfortable, you could adjust the height. And so that's another good reason to make your own stand. All right. I'm going to get this handy box mounted first before we start wiring. Man, I've gotten the dropsies today. So what I did on this uh, mounting plate that I made is I, um, I drilled and tapped those holes because I knew I wouldn't be able to fit a, get my fat hands behind there and get them in. So let me get that one started. That I, I did while we were on uh, commercial break. Put those guys in there like that. That 
looks pretty nice. Nice little stainless steel cover. And I designed the overhang on this to overhang this switch. So when I'm getting all the metal filings and stuff, they'll uh, hopefully not fall into the switch. So just something else to think about when you're doing this. I got this magnet at uh, Home Depot and it's just, it's just a magnet with a hole in it. And I threaded the um, pipe. I think this is uh, 832 or something. It's just a small thread, nothing, nothing huge. And the idea was this would, my uh, adjustable square would stick to it and would keep it from falling off. So, so here's this. This goes on here like that and see it, the magnet keeps it so it doesn't fall but it's easy to grab, so. All right, so let's plug this in. See how it goes. Yeah. Okay, so far so good. Switch is off, excellent. My clamp, which I'll probably replace with a zip tie, because, or maybe not, I don't know. Clamp's cool too, so. All right, here we go. Fingers crossed, not really. Really handy. It's way easier than walking over to the wall, unplugging, plugging it in. Um, I think it's safer too, plus it's safety red. So it's like a win-win for safety. So, hey, it's been fun, guys. Um, I did want to mention that uh, I found out about those brake drums from my, uh, my son, Scott. He drives big trucks and um, he cued me in. He actually scored me three of those bad boys. So uh, I'm gonna make some stands for some other stuff and uh, it's coming up, so thank you, Scott. Big shout out to you. And I uh, appreciate some likes and shares, and uh, be sure to subscribe. I'll see you next time, Sidehill Fabricator.